Scott Emper heen. On the line, and he's all fired up. And he's I'm fired like, up. How, how are these accelerators pulling this off? I'm seeing his head twisting. And, oh my God, I wish I had, we had a group of accelerators helping Scott out in the AI space. Um, Scott is one of the, our um, co-organizers of, of this event. I met this uh, guy in Mexico at the Global Speakers Academy. And we had a ball and a lot of discussions on AI and on how he can help small businesses grow. And he has a great personal story to share. And he just has elevated it by using great AI tools in creating great AI-generated uh, AI social media content. Scott, the floor is yours. Oh, fantastic. Hey, hang on, before you start, just one question, because the of question course. that we all ask, why are you so fascinated about AI? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> the number one reason I'm fascinated and excited about AI, if you are watching and you're an EO member and you have a small business or a small to mid-sized business and you felt like your size or your limited staff or uh, something was holding you back, that day is over. Your weakness has become your strength as of November 20, uh, 2022. And the strength of big companies and big staff and resources is a uh, disadvantage. And I think never has that been more true than today. I see big companies moving very slowly to adopt new technology because they got to protect staff. They got to protect employees, scope of work, things like that. With small companies, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain by, by jumping in and using these technologies. So hopefully we're going to share some of that stuff with you today. That's why I'm so excited. Did I lose you? No, you, did, you, you didn't. Sorry, I was a I was That was my good answer. Was it, that, uh, that sorry, was, I was, was a bit distracted. I'm sorry can. about that. You want me to say it again? I was super yeah, yeah, yes, about but, that. You know... We have this Was huge table. We have this huge table. Yeah. <laughs> we have like. Scott, fatigue is kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> remember? A little bit of fatigue. <laughs> it's, a long, it's the longest webinar I ever did. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bet this is a, this is a long. But one. I'm all I'm all in airs now. Uh, do you seriously want me to answer it again? Did I, yes, did please. I miss it? All <laughs> yes, right. please. <laughs> so so I'll tell you why I'm so excited uh, because small businesses. If you're a quarter of a million to a million, three million, four million, five million, whatever weaknesses or shortcomings you thought you may have had with your business, maybe a lack of resources or a lack of finances, none of those things are actually negatives anymore. In fact, I think for small businesses, the weaknesses have become the strengths. And for the big businesses, the strengths have become the weaknesses. If I've got a big business, and I've got to worry about 100, 200, 300 people on my staff, 400 people on my staff, and I've got to protect uh, scope of work, I'm very, very nervous. And now that I've got a, if you've got a small company, you can use a resource. Look at the Red Room. They've branded, they've built a website in two hours. They've come up with a whole business concept. And at the end, I'm hoping I could share uh, 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 some software with them that'll develop their entire marketing campaign in about two minutes and four seconds. That's what we've got it down to. And I'm talking about emails, blogs, yeah. ads, social content. So we'll give them the link to that. It's a new day for small businesses. So if you're on this webinar and you've got a small business, mid-sized business, whatever it is, and you used to think of maybe a lack of resources as a weakness, I work with literally hundreds of businesses all in the social media and the digital marketing space through our workshops and our courses. And they're now seeing AI as the ultimate advantage for those big, bigger companies that are slow to move. Your, your, your smallness is your strength. That's why I'm excited. Yeah. Scott, share a personal story. All right. All right. Well, do you mind if I just share the, uh, share the presentation? We'll go yes, right please. into it. All right. We're going to talk about the um, unlocking the secrets of AI powered marketing. But as Robert mentioned, I do want to share something really briefly to give it uh, some context and share why I'm so particularly passionate about the subject. And you'll see the connection between your business and hopefully my story. Just a few short years ago, I'm on stage. I'm accepting another award uh, in front of a thousand of my industry peers. I was so excited. I'm the CEO 
of one of the fastest growing social media agencies and digital marketing agencies of its type in that category. We're winning all these awards. We've passed 10 million in sales. We're headed to 15 and 20 million. I'm thrilled. Life is really good. We're collecting blue chip clients, Ford, Chrysler, GM, Home Depot, NASCAR. We were on an absolute roll. One of my personal, one of my personal sort of uh, heroes was in the front row of one of the workshops I was giving. His name was Grant Cardone. Maybe you've heard of him, but I was just blown away. And I was thinking, boy, I've made it. I could have never guessed that on Monday when I returned to the office, I received the worst, second worst professional news I've ever received or hope to ever receive. Two of my largest clients had lost their business, which meant I lost mine. And that was on Monday coming back from one of the biggest nights of my life in Las Vegas, my professional careers. I had an emergency meeting with my forum to talk about this because I'd lost you know, 90% of my revenue. And after about four hours of talking to my forum and sharing my financials and sharing what was going on, they told me to shut it down. And they were right. There was no way out. I'd taken on a line of credit, funded a bunch of uh, debt. Now I'd taken on the line of credit. I had no revenue. Three weeks later, I'm in my office shutting it down. That's my son there. I'm packing up my office. My daughter took the picture. I've got two small children. I'm 50 years old. My attorney that is watching over as I'm shutting my office down, it was the most humiliating thing. I'm shutting the office down and he tells me I can't take my laptop because it's considered an asset of the business. And he happened to be an EO guy as well, EO person as well. He goes, but you can't take your phone. I'm, it's like a Jerry Maguire moment. I could take my phone. I could take my phone. Um, I had no clients, no business, no money. And worse than that, I was a half a million dollars in debt because I had taken out a line of credit thinking that I was growing to the moon. My daughter, in the most humiliating and difficult experiences of my professional career, asked me, said, Daddy, can I take my crayons? 20 years of building a business, missing birthday parties, flying all over the country. And she asked me, daddy, can I take my crayons? I said, yeah, you can take your crayons. It was just humiliating. The next 30 days of my life were a struggle. And as an entrepreneur, you know the struggle, you know the, you know the sleepless nights you occasionally have. This was one of them, but it was a 30-day nightmare where it was just a downward spiral trying to figure out what I was going to do, how I was going to turn this thing around. I felt hopeless. I felt immobilized. I felt like I was drowning because I didn't know how I was going to turn this thing around, if it was even possible to turn it around. The next morning, I finally got up. I forced myself to go on a run. And maybe you've been there. You kind of get some, you kind of get some momentum going. I started sweating a little bit. And I started thinking to myself, wait a second, I have an idea. If I could do for myself what I did for other businesses for the last 20 years, that is get customers with social media and digital marketing. If I could do that for myself, maybe I could turn this thing around. I raced back home kind of in a fit of inspiration. I sat down and I wrote down a marketing plan, a basic marketing plan, an eight-step marketing plan that I teach, I teach to all of my clients. I wrote down the plan for myself. I decided the specific tools that I was going to use to reach my best customers, my hottest customers. I even segmented that. And then finally, I decided to do something that EO teaches, that you all know, accountability is what drives results. I knew what I needed to do, and it scared the crap out of me, but I did it anyways. I posted on social media. I told everybody I lost everything. Many of them already knew anyways. And I told the truth, and I said, this is where I am. Remember my big office in Newport Beach? 10,000 square foot, 40 employees. This is my new office. Between two filing cabinets with the soy sauce on one side, when my dad would open the filing cabinet, I had to duck. It was the most humbling and humiliating thing I've ever gone through. But I posted it and something inside of me said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna conquer this. Just like you felt with your business, I'm going to figure this thing out. So I said, here's where I am. Here's where I'm going. And I'm going to have you watch a process. I'm going to post everything on social media. I've got my plan. I've got my tools. I'm going to be totally accountable for this. 
I executed day in and day out, posted every single day. You can see it on my Instagram feeds. You can see it on my Facebook feeds. It's all still there. In 88 days, I walked into the bank. I paid off 100% of the bank debt. They told me not to take a picture. I took a picture anyway. In that time, I'd managed to create these workshops, social media and digital marketing workshops, where I trained other EO folks and non-EO folks. They were all free. I just decided to give it away. I created an online course where I offered that to EO folks and their virtual assistants and their managers. And I created a coaching program, again, to coach them, their managers, or their VAs and social media. And I built the agency. But that's not the important part. The important part and why all this ties back to where we are right now and why I'm so passionate about this is in November of 2022, everybody knows chat GPT exploded. It absolutely exploded. But I had, just like I started this thing, smaller businesses have an advantage. You have a tremendous advantage. I recognize that advantage going through all this stuff. And I went all in on chat GPT, 100% all in. I started buying and trying every app you could possibly get. If I saw, and you see the same things on Instagram, on TikTok, you see an app and it says, here's 101 prompts that'll change your life. I bought it. I bought it. Whatever it was, I bought it. I did all my weekly workshops and I shared that with my thousands of folks that were coming in my workshops, hundreds of folks that were in my course. I was sharing it saying, try this, try this, try this. And I would get feedback from my students. I would get feedback. I went in on ChatGPT. I went on Jasper, MidJourney, Video, you name it. I bought it. I tried it. And I'm no expert in all these things, but I did get excellent feedback from hundreds, if not thousands of different data points on what was working for small businesses. So Here's my disclaimer. I'll just share this. Is this what I'm about to share with you in the next 10, 15 minutes is not theory. I'm not a theorist. It'll not be about the future. I have absolutely zero idea of really where it's going. But it will be about if you are marketing, if you're in the red room, how to get results right now faster than you ever dreamed possible using a few tools and a few prompts and a few frameworks. So as I said, my name is Scott Embringham. I believe any business can get customers with digital marketing and social media and AI faster than any time in history. And the reason I believe that is I've been doing it for 20 years and I've never seen anything like that, something that exists right now with AI. So in the next 15 minutes, we're going to cover three things. Number one is we're going to talk about where to start. So if you've been thinking about starting with AI for your marketing, I'm going to tell you exactly where to start. I'm going to tell you exactly what to say to get all the content produced your emails, your blogs, your ads, faster than you've ever thought possible using frameworks and prompts that are working right now, today. And then finally, how to get produced even faster. I'm going to show you one incredible hack that I modeled from somebody out there that is just absolutely mind-blowing. So we're going to go through it in about 15 minutes. I'm excited about this. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, first, we'll talk about where to start. I call this my ultimate marketing prompt. So here we go. The truth is, the prompt is everything. You know that. We've had some amazing speakers on here today. That's why it's called prompt engineering. And some folks are getting upwards of two or $300,000 for prompt engineering. The, the prompt is everything. It's super important. But the facts are there are prompts and there are frameworks. And I want to show you the difference. These are my words. These, aren't, these are the things that we talk about in our courses and our classes. I want to have this conversation. So I'm going to call prompts, prompts, and frameworks, frameworks. And I'll show you the distinction in a second. You'll hear things like, hey, your prompts should be, uh, participant announce your application, good. Be clear and specific with your prompts. Everybody knows that. Okay, so here's a quick case study. Midjourney is an image generation tool that can generate art based on text prompts. You all know that. So let's be clear and specific with the prompt. Create a photo of a monkey in a suit. Bam, you get a photo of a monkey in a suit. Really cool, right? But if you want something a little bit better, you might say, okay, here's what I want. I want a photo of a monkey or create a monkey in a suit photo, but I want it photo hyper-realistic photo uh, photo photograph, 50 millimeter portrait photography. When you add the additional layer of information, you get a much different monkey. Here's what I'm calling the difference between a prompt and a framework. And these are my words. These aren't, you know, other, other folks uh, um, um, sort of, generally accepted language models, but I'm going to call one a prompt, something you or I could probably come up with on our own. And then I'm going to call the other one a framework, something that, 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 that requires some level of expertise. 
I'm not a photographer. I would not have known to do a photo hyper-realistic photograph, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to call those prompts and frameworks. And it becomes really important in a second because I've actually got prompts and frameworks I'm going to give you. At the end of this presentation, there's a QR code. You can scan it. You'll get all these prompts and frameworks and they're absolutely free. Okay. So the difference, you see the difference between a prompt and a prompt and a framework. It's next level refined output. That's what we'll call it for now. So I'm going to walk you through three prompts, marketing prompts, or what are sometimes called marketing prompts. And then the last one is going to be a prompt and a framework combined and watch the difference it makes. And this is one you want to take a picture of if you can't stay to the end and get all the prompts and frameworks with the QR code. Here's the first prompt. People call it the prompt engineer prompt. If you've been active on social media, if you've been active online, you've probably seen this one. The prompt engineer prompt is something where it says, I want you to become my prompt engineer. Uh, your goal is to help me craft the best possible prompt for my needs. And it goes on and on and on. And what you're doing is you're training chat GPT to come up with the ultimate prompt for you. It's a great prompt. My only challenge is when I offer this to my students in my course and in my, in my workshops, they say it's great, but I need an answer now. I have a small business. I'm pulled in so many directions. I just need content this week. I need it in an hour. And this doesn't get you there fast enough for a lot of the students that are in my course. Second one, they call it the expert mode prompt. I absolutely love this prompt. I'm a big fan of this prompt. The expert mode prompt it says, I want you to act as an expert in marketing, law, whatever you want. You could put it in that mode. And now you're having a conversation with a marketing expert. The only problem with this prompt is you have to ask the right questions for the marketing expert to give you the right answer. Somebody said it before, garbage in, garbage out. Awesome prompt, not the best prompt out there. Marketing prompt. Now we're getting closer to the pin. I found this prompt. We've tried it with all kinds of literally hundreds of students, professional services, uh, you, you name it, every kind of business. This is an awesome prompt but there was still something wrong with it. Longer, longer story. It wasn't giving us the kind of level of content. It was like the monkey versus the awesome monkey in a suit. It was giving us a really good monkey, but not the awesome monkey in a suit. It wasn't giving us the real answer we wanted. Then we did one thing and her name was a, a, a speaker in here. Her name was Sarah, I believe. Sarah Hack, um, I believe was her name. She hit it right on the head. She said, start with the problem you're trying to solve. The problem you're trying to solve. We ultimately, funny enough, we called it the uh, the marketing campaign prompt. It's one prompt that actually primes GT, GPT to create the entire campaign for you. It's mind blowing. And I'll show you how it works in a second. But right now, just know it's a prompt and a problem framework. And that's why I love what Sarah said about that. And here's what it is. It's the marketing campaign prompt with one framework in it. And it's a problem framework. So if I was to ask you, imagine your ideal customer right now, your ideal customer right now, if they woke up after a night of not getting any sleep and they called their friend and said, oh, I've got these three problems as it relates to your product and service, what would they say on the phone to their friend that if you heard that, you would say, that's my ideal customer. That's the kind of statement and that's it. That one problem statement, if you could identify three problems your customer has right now that they're struggling with, that if you overheard them, that would be your ideal customer. When you do that, magic happens with this prompt. Magic happens with your own campaign. And I'm going to give you a specific example of that to try to make it come alive. I'm going to give you a case study. Uh, a, a woman came through our workshop and our course. She took our course, her team took our course, all the stuff. And she goes to a workshop and she's, she's there during COVID. And she says, well, nothing can help my business because we're all shut down. Nobody can come in my business. I don't know how I'm even going to survive. But she comes through the course in a last ditch effort to try to make something happen. I said, what is your business? And she said, it's a clothing store. I said, who are your ideal customers? She said, women in Laguna Beach. She's right here in Orange County, California. I said, what problems do they have right now that if you heard them, you would say that could be my ideal customer? And she goes, well, I don't even know. But if, if I was going to tell you the problems they have, they would say simple, they're stuck at home during COVID. Uh, they're bored on Facebook all day. They miss seeing their friends and they miss shopping. How could that possibly help me, Scott? I said, well, as I think about it as a marketing person, I see that as an opportunity. If they're stuck at home all day, they're on Facebook all day and they miss seeing their friends. What if you had a Facebook live fashion show and brought your business to their business or to their homes? 
And she said, oh my gosh, that could be a really good idea. She did that, crushed it, absolutely crushed it. She, she ultimately created Facebook virtual live fashion shows and she saved her business. She went local, she went regional, she went national. She started picking up orders from all over the world. So how is this relevant to ChatGPT? She's still in the course right now. As she was looking at this framework, she goes, you know what? I'm curious. The, the framework we just talked about, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the marketing framework. She goes, I'm going to try it. She took the marketing framework. She filled it out, marketing, the name of her business, her name, her website, her phone number, what she sells. And then she plugged in, stuck at home during COVID, can't go outside, bored scrolling through Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. She goes, let's see what marketing, what chat GPT would push out. Maybe hard to see. I'm going to, I'm going to put a couple of things in here. It kicked out one of the most powerful marketing plans. I'm 20 years, 20 years in the business writing marketing plans for every business under the sun. This marketing plan was so powerful. Number one, under the SWOT analysis, it recognized that while other businesses were shut down, she had the opportunity to go online and push her content out there. And in fact, use Facebook Live fashion show type ideas. It went on to say, hey, develop a curriculum email marketing campaign. And, you're, and then it went through, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you did a video and created a video that went out to everybody? And then finally, it tied in special promotions and other people that she could collaborate with on the event. I'm embarrassed, but not surprised to say this was a better marketing plan than I came up with her. And I've been doing this a long time for a lot of businesses. So it was as competitive as anything. So she looked at this and she said, okay, and you might be looking at it the same way and says, that's a great plan. But now that you know that, how do you actually get all your content produced? She has two shops. She's running back and forth and she has no time to start engineering, prompt engineering GPT, nor does she have any desire to. So I said, okay, what if this marketing campaign front, uh, prompt could actually power other things even better? Um, we're going to show you that in a moment, but if you're going to take a picture of one slide, uh, this would be the picture to take. And again, we're offering you all these prompts at the end with a QR code. But this prompt works in any business. I suggest try it, fill out the information, do this. And it literally starts priming chat GPT for all the other elements. So let's take a look. Number two is what to say. Let's say you've got a great marketing plan. Now you just need to build out the content. You're in the red room. The, the, the Cokes are starting to wear off and you need a campaign fast. This is how you do it. The expert marketing prompt, the one that we just showed you, actually can build your marketing plan, build your marketing calendar, build your emails, ads, content, blogs, video script, and more in about two minutes. Well, I'm going to try, I'm going to take you through a couple of things right now in just a minute or so. Social media posts and blog. Step one, the social content prompt, uh, prompt really easy. Your marketing expert being consistent with the tactics and strategy above because you're dropping in right before your other, your other prompts you gave it. Write some posts between 100 and 200 words and you fill in the information, really easy. Here's a framework you can add. Remember the two monkeys, the basic monkey and the really awesome monkey we talked about? Pain Agitate Relief Framework is a framework that the best copywriters in the, use, in, in the world use to amp up their copy, to really connect with the audience. You don't have to know how it works. You just have to know, put it in there as a framework and look at the difference between that. All she had to do when she created her copy, the owner of this boutique, she said, I want two posts and I want them to attend my Facebook live event. Any small business could do that. The pain agitate relief framework is embedded in the prompt. Look at the difference between the basic social media post and the pain agitate relief framework. Just look at the first line, attention fa uh, fashion lovers unique boutique is hosting an unmissable uh, uh, Facebook live event. And the second one, connects right with where there was a sore spot. Feeling bored and un uninspired while stuck at home? We hear you, ladies. It's time to refresh your wardrobe and bring back the excitement. The framework starts making it between the good monkey and the great monkey. It amps the level of the content up like one of the best copywriters in the world just wrote your copy. You could do it in the interest of time. I'm going to crank. You do it with Mid Journey as well. Um, go, I'm going to go on to the blog. And this is really, really key. Here's the blog. The blog prompt, basic and advanced. The basic, you're a marketing expert, being consistent with the marketing plan above, write a blog. And it, you're going to include at least 10 high-ranking SEO uh, terms. 
and the rest of the information any business owner can fill out. The key ingredient, the framework that we embedded in the blog uh, uh, prompt is BuzzFeed style, as well as the problem framework. And look at the difference. When you do that, and uh, the owner of Unique Boutique did that, she simply wrote down the problems that she's trying to solve. BuzzFeed style was embedded in the prompt. So GPT knew, ah, make it a list, make it interesting, make it catchy, make it fun, all the different stuff that BuzzFeed is really good at. And her blog was fantastic. And as she's looking at this blog, she says, oh my gosh, that's better than anything I could have ever written. And secondly, she looked at all these 10 things and she said, could those also be individual Facebook posts? In addition, I said, you bet they could. You could ask ChatGPT to convert each one of those 10 into Facebook posts. She goes, could they be emails? Yes, they could. Ask ChatGPT just like that. It bangs out all the emails. You're now starting to create massive amount of content. I get in the interest of time. Mid-journey, same thing. You can drop the prompts and the frameworks in there and get your images. And in you know four minutes, we've got the social media post and blog. You can do the same thing for emails, event description, all the way down. At the end, grab the QR code. You'll go to the free resources section of our site and you can get prompts. You get 25 different prompts and frameworks that'll blow you away with your marketing. Last one, how to get it all done. This is the ultimate, ultimate hack that I'm probably most excited about. The truth is, as you all know by now, marketing is not, is, excuse me, content is not the bottleneck anymore. Content has been democratized. With the right prompts and the right frameworks, you can get amazing content faster than ever. But then what about the distribution? What about hacking up all the content and distributing the content? There's one key thing that is absolutely so overlooked. And nobody's talking about this. I think it's so important. It's called the content pyramid. I didn't create this. A guy named Gary V sort of popularized this. And as we started using the content period, con content pyramid with video.io, everything changed for our students and for us. And I'll show it to you right now and you'll have an advantage. The content pyramid looks like this. If you use, if you do podcasts, if you do a keynote, if you write a blog and you just want to do a video of it, you could take that one piece of content, chop it up. Oh, like the BuzzFeed blog. That's why the BuzzFeed blog is so good. Like the BuzzFeed blog, videotape it or be on an interview or podcast and mention those 10 points. And you can repurpose all that content by chopping it up and pushing it out across all your channels. And you go, well, how do I do that? It sounds easier than, uh, it, it sounds like you make it sound easy. How do I actually do that? You push it right through video.ai. We're doing it right now. You drop in one video. And if you're doing a BuzzFeed type article or your podcast, you're making seven points or eight points during it, that one podcast dropped into video.ai will create 60 pieces of content and then 60 pieces of content across five different platforms. Now you're pushing out 300 individual pieces of content to all these different platforms. Your impressions, your awareness, you'll dominate a market where you didn't be able to dominate it before. I'm running out of time, but here's what it is. We talked about where to start using that one ultimate marketing framework. Two, exactly what to say. Go step by step. You can train chat, chat GPT with that one framework and ask it, grab some frameworks from, from us in our, in our next section, and then how to get it done. Use that content pyramid to just radically blow away your competition and dominate a market. They won't see what, they won't, they won't see you coming. So as our free gift to you, um, we've created uh, a software that makes it even easier. It's called an AI campaign generation software. We're offering the free, uh, the, uh, the frameworks for free. We're offering a free trial on this. What it is, is basically a software that sits on top of ChatGPT. You answer six questions. And what it does is it parses your information and creates an entire 30 day campaign using prompts and embedded frameworks like you've never seen before, emails, ads, blogs, video scripts, and more in about two minutes. So it's not a content generator. It's a campaign generator. Use that free trial code, EO three day trial. It's yours free. And uh, there's a free resources section so you can get this presentation and all that kind of good stuff on the site. Um, love to take any questions. And I think I'm one minute over. Scott, you did great. How did you come up with the uh, uh, frameworks? Uh, the frameworks, they're all known frameworks you know, in copywriting circles and in marketing circles. Uh, we know that those frameworks exist, just like 
just like when we showed um, the, the photographs of the monkeys, the basic monkey and the amazing looking monkey, photographers would know that, um, okay, I want this type of film. I've got this shutter speed. I've got all this kind of stuff. But if I'm not a photographer, how the heck am I supposed to come up with those frameworks? Well, we just scraped a bunch of them and we said, you know, let's give them to our EO brothers and sisters, make them available. And then when you write your email, you can embed a pastor framework. You can embed uh, the attention, interest, desire framework. I mean, you could embed all these different frameworks and just blow away anything you've ever written. The reason why I like it so much is people are a little bit dissatisfied when they just prompt uh, uh, using ChatGPT and it gets some information out, it gets some blocks out, but it's always disappointing. But if you really add a framework to it, you really get good content, which yeah. makes sense and it fits the context. Yeah, prompt plus a framework uh, is next level. Just like we saw with that monkey, prompt plus a framework can make it just crazy good. And that's what we that's what we were, yeah. were, were and on. you have embedded that in the uh, in the software so you start off with this is six basic questions it's six questions any business owner can ask they basically say what is the name of your business what is the email by the way we built this for virtual assistants and marketing managers because those are the folks in our courses and so the problem that we solve just like sarah it was brilliant she's like what problem do you solve we got clear on the problem we solve for marketers where it's one thing to know about all these prompts and all these frameworks. Who the heck is, uh, except us lunatics that are going to go out and research all this stuff, the average business person is trying to run their law firm, run their tech firm, run their whatever, and they don't have time to go do these things. So we decided, let's create a software that has these frameworks and prompts embedded. They could just say, what business are you in? Who's your customer? Name a couple problems you solve. Hit submit. It goes to work parsing the information and cranks out not just an email, an entire email campaign, an entire blog series, an entire, like the whole thing, it's all there for them. And now they hand it to a virtual assistant. By the way, on the website, you'll see you can get a free virtual assistant sort of um, setup from one of our partners because that's the other bottom. Like, you go, great, I can create this content, but I can't actually push it out. A fellow EOer said, I'll tell you what, I'll buy every EOer a setup of a virtual assistant where we'll vet three virtual assistants for every EO who tries your software and we'll do it for free, we'll waive the fee. So they'll actually get to pick three virtual assistants that meet their exact marketing criteria that are by the way, trained on our stuff to just market for them and make so that can, not a bottleneck. So I can fire my uh, content marketeer. Yes, oh yeah, well, I want your red room to, to, they got their content. We'll give them yeah, the free, yeah. free act to use that yeah, code. Yeah, yeah. You haven't done that already, Robert? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one question that just came in. Yes, uh, the, our, our software speaks, I don't like a dozen or so languages. So it's available in, yeah. in German, Dutch, Spanish, you know, uh, French, you name it all, all like tons of different languages and we're adding more languages all the time. But probably most of the languages that are on this, on this broadcast right now, yeah. will will have it. And how did it improve from ChatGPT3 to ChatGPT4? Uh, night and day. It was mind blowing because the, the problem was ChatGPT3 didn't have the embedded frameworks. Like we would say, use the, the pastor framework or the agitate, uh, the agitate, uh, pain agitate solve form. And it didn't recognize it. Once that came online, you could see the emails just get so powerful. Anything better than anything I could have ever written or frankly, any of my other copywriters. It's just so good. Nobody's got all those frameworks in their head and then knows where to use them. Oh, I'm going to use it in the social media campaign or the blog campaign. It's just hard, too hard to keep track of. One last question from Edward. Yeah, I'm, I'm blown away by your talk, uh, Scott. Uh, not only did you share a very personal question, with, <laughs> which I really love, and uh, you, you gave us some, some really practical advice, including uh, the QR codes and all. I think you 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 passed the the, the Global Speakers Academy in, in flying colors. <laughs> it must be, you're amazing. And also the work you've done uh, for promoting this event in the U.S. has uh, given us nearly 200 uh, uh, registrants from the U.S. So uh, I believe Wonderful. you. What? <laughs> Wonderful. I'm, it's a privilege to be here with you you all, and you did an amazing job putting this together. So I'm I'm really pleased and privileged to be a part of this.